So in this segment, we're going to be talking about one, you know, a couple of different things here because I've just seen a kind of an article which caught my eye, and it wasn't this just this one; it was this one as well. So we'll talk about this this article first, and then we'll talk about you know why. You know, it's strange what the EU are proposing next. So anyways, in this article, we're going to talk about, at least in this video, we're going to firstly talk about the uh, government paying in to the Horizon, the EU's Horizon program, which is to do with um, science. So the government has stepped in at the 11th hour with an additional £250 million in funding to pay for the UK's association with Horizon Europe, uh, the EU's funding programme for science and innovation. The universities have welcomed this because they thought it'd come out of the university's budget, but it's not. The, um, the uh, government have paid in as a separate amount. So a statement from the Department of Business announced that this investment reinforced the government's commitment to putting research and development at the heart of its plans to build back, you know, that phrase build back better is so lame, um, from the pandemic. It will support vital pioneering research while enabling the UK's brilliant scientists, researchers and businesses to access, access and benefit from the world's largest co collaborative research programme, Horizon Europe, worth £95 billion, pounds, uh, euros, sorry, and uh, 80 billion pounds over the next decade because obviously you're working with the top you know universities in europe which you know in some areas won't rival the americans when it comes to things like mit but you're still you're still rolling with some top dons here in the eu and some you know some esteemed uh, institutions as well that are phenomenal have phenomenal um research and development um uh place uh, industries or whatever they're, they're, there's some good universities out there man that's that's what i'm trying to say Clearly, I did not go to a good one because I'm struggling to articulate myself as always. So the UK uh, retained participation in Horizon as part of the um, the TCA, the Trade and Cooperation Deal. But universities leaders feared that the government would not contribute the costs, and you know it would be up to the universities to contribute that out of research grants. So university leaders warned that such a move would effectively have cut you know 18,000 full-time academics, research posts, and weakening the UK's appeal for talented researchers. So you know the universities are happy about this um let's see here they welcome the additional funding you know a professor julia buckingham said we are pleased that the government has averted threats to uk science and research by allocating additional funding to the uk's association to horizon europe and welcomed its incre um welcomed their commitment to increase r d to 2.4 percent of gdp by 2027 uh, 2027 so, you know, a good thing, you know, increasing, you know, the um, the R&D budget of the country is good because we are normally we are reliant on other countries um, far too much when it comes to research and development, which is very expensive. And so by doing this, it does give the country more legs and hopefully makes the country more appealing for scientists. Um, so providing additional uh, funding for Horizon Europe to protect core R&D budgets is a good move by government and underlines its determination to establish Britain as a global science power. And obviously getting this sort of um, ability to access Horizon through the, uh, the Brexit deal is also a good thing as well. So scientists and researchers have been vital in the coronavirus pandemic response, uh, blah, 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 provide high, you know, high value jobs growth and greener and healthier economy so i was going to leave the video there but then i saw this article and i was like hang on now what's this and this was written uh before this was written before this one so it makes it even more curious so Britain will join China in being locked out of research with the EU on cutting-edge quantum technology such as new breeds of supercomputers due to security concerns under European Commission proposal um, which is opposed by academics and 19 member states. And I think one of the reasons the EU is doing this is because they want to build their own... Um, I think it's called a semi a semiconductor, you know, to build you know things like CPUs and um, things like that, you know, silicon chips like this, um, essentially computers. And so... Because of the global um, shortage, when it comes to, uh, I think it's NAND, I can't, I can't remember the exact terminology here. Gamers, I, I've watched so many Gamers Nexus videos, and I still don't know the right words. But obviously, there is a sh shortage of you know silicon, you know chips in the world, um, computer chips and stuff like that. And um, the EU wants to build its own. I think it's called a semiconductor um, TSMC, which is um, you know based in Taiwan. They're one of the global um, you know foundries that build you know computer chips and stuff like that. AMD work with them um, a lot um, with a lot of their work. And so point being is that I think the EU want to lock out certain countries because this sort of work is expensive, man. 
this sort of work is expensive. The R and D that goes behind, you know, Intel and AMD is insane. So the reason why the EU want to lock out countries like Britain and China is because they think we cannot be trusted, and also China because you know they rip off loads of um, you know patents and stuff like that. They do not care. So I think this is the reason why the EU are doing this. I don't necessarily agree with the stance they're taking, but you know by doing Brexit, the UK gives the EU this sort of power. So at a meeting on Friday, Commission officials said the EU needed to keep control of intellectual property on key projects that. Um, and um, and that working with even close allies such as the UK and Switzerland open the door uh, up uh, to open the door up to an ex unacceptable risk. And the thing is, the EU are good partners with Switzerland, so it's very strange they will take this stance um, with Switzerland. So this is about um, you know under the UK's deal, you know um, we do get access to Horizon um, uh, for seven years by the looks of things. Oh, sorry and participate in the EU's Horizon Research Programme, a seven-year, £82 billion funding, funding scheme. So, you know, Horizon is funded very well. But point being is that, you know, if if the UK is going to be shut out of, um, you know, key um, key projects, you know, what why are we paying in so much then? It's very strange. The Commission has now decided to curtail the type of projects in which the UK will be able to take part under a draft proposal discussed with the member states on Friday. So again, that's very strange. Obviously, you're locking up British experts as well, but clearly the EU think that it's more important to hang on to um, bits of intellectual property rather than have the UK involved in case things get out or, um, you know, things get leaked, etc. So, you can't so this is um a statement here you can't put the eu uh we can't put the uk and switzerland in the same box as china and iran said one concerned diplomat um if this is what Breton, Breton's idea of strategic autom autonomy looks like uh we're in for a rough ride the commission is pulling the rug underneath fruitful uh collaborations they need to stay on the carpet and obviously the scientists want you know collaboration with you know other countries because it helps their work you know process progress much quicker you know you've got to think that having access to you know universities within the uk within switzerland within china would help them progress and continue on with their work but obviously the eu is trying to make the argument this is for security reasons because they don't want their intellectual property ripped off by other countries that you know the uk has paid into the budget i don't know if switzerland have or switzerland must have paid in as well but i doubt china have so that's why they don't want china in but then they don't want switzerland and the uk in so it's very strange um commission officials um tried to argue that the uk's attempt to break international law over the northern ireland protocol um was raised by the commission as an example why there was a lack of trust so again it's very strange what's going on here i don't know if this is posturing uh from the eu but um, the new eligib eligibility rules proposed by the Commission include restrictions on working on a range of sensitive areas such as quantum computers, um, you know, emerging technology of uh, global strategic importance. So they don't want the UK involved in that. Obviously, the scientists are very annoyed. Um, and, you know, this article does go through that. It does say that in order to achieve the expected outcomes and safeguard the union's strategic assets, interest, autonomy or security, namely participation, is limited to legal entities established in member states. So the EFTA countries like Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein. Um, proposals include entities established in countries outside of the scope will be ineligible, um, the draft says. So again, you know, it's very strange what's going on here. According to a the draft text, the goal of the changes is to make independent European capacities uh, in developing and pro, um, producing quantum computing technologies of strategic importance for future computing capacities and applications in security and dual use technology. So the EU wants to become more independent uh, when it comes to technology. Obviously, China is the you know China and Taiwan are the biggest manufacturers of these sort of you know computer parts, but also most of the R and D is done by you know Intel and AMD, which are American companies. Obviously, you have Nvidia as well, um, as well as ARM, which are owned by uh, SoftBank, which is owned by Japan, which is being um, in the process of being taken over by Nvidia. So a lot of the work's done in sort of Asia or America, whilst you know the EU wants a piece of that. You know they want to be top dons here as well. So, you know, but they're taking the stance of we want to shut, you know, certain countries out of the um, the kind of research process. 
um, because of um, the uh, desire to protect intellectual property. So they're saying what they're saying is the UK is not a safe pair of hands, which is interesting. Um, you know, senior academics have written um, so a letter from Thomas Hoffman, president of the Technical University of Munich, written on behalf of the of institutions in Switzerland, Denmark, Luxembourg, Israel, and the Netherlands. So you have EU uh, members, uh, sorry, EFTA members. Um, Denmark is a member of the EU. Um, so is Luxembourg, I think. Uh, Israel isn't, and the Netherlands are. Ones of negative impact on research, uh, future research. So, you know, opening the scientific borders for the countries outside of the European Union should go hand in hand with strengthening collaboration with our closest partners and not undermining it. Obviously, you know, when like I said, when it comes to scientists, they want to work together because that will help them progress when it comes to doing, you know, projects, etc. And so by shutting off, you know, certain countries, you know, this is done for political reasons rather than for scientific reasons. So it's very strange that this is, you know, that this is happening. Obviously, you know, this is within the EU's right to do this as long as the members and the European Parliament agree to this. Um, however, it's a very strange move that the Commission are making here. Very, very strange. Um, and so Hoffman adds, we are deeply concerned that the exclusion of aligned European countries with a long record of cooperation and excellence in research and innovation from parts of the programme will have negative impacts on European institutions and their capability to produce digital, uh, key digital enabling and emerging technology. So this is going to continue on. They're going to um, discuss things um, around April 19th. So I guess if this crops up again, I will keep you guys updated on this. But so what what are the key so what's the conclusion to this it's that the uk has paid into horizon which is the eu's kind of science thing um however britain will be shut out of key sort of projects that relate to supercomputers etc um for the purposes of intellectual property to keep intellectual property within the eu obviously by doing brexit we give the eu the power to make these sorts of decisions um and obviously, when we tried to go out alone with a project like Galileo, you know, making our own satellite scheme, that did not work very well. Um, that was another fiasco. So it was in our best interest to pay into the scheme. And, um, you know, I doubt the UK on our own could do, you know, this sort of project, these sorts of projects. But it is strange that, you know, that the UK has paid in to be um, part of Horizon, but we are being shut out. But also the fact that, you know, Switzerland are being shut out and... You know, the, the kind of agreements between Switzerland and the EU are very strange and very uh, complex. But, you know, Switzerland being shut out is strange. You know, there seems to be a real lack of trust between the EU and certain other third countries. And I'm not sure what to make of it. You know, it's within their right to make these um, judgments. You know, if the EU, you know, agree that, you know, the UK cannot be trusted um, when it comes to the construction of, you know, semiconductors and things like that, you know, supercomputers, etc. fine. Shutting out Switzerland's a strange move. But also, you know, cutting yourself off from, you know, other, you know, top end, you know, science uh, universities, etc. is also a strange move. But um, yeah, you know, I don't know what more to say. I'm going to keep rambling because I'm very confused by this story. But, um, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.